everyone, welcome back to Watercolor Wednesday. This is your guest designer, Kendra Krebs, and this week I wanted to bring you a really fun tutorial on this little country cottage. And once again, we are going to be working with our focal point. This time it is not in the center, it is now on, off to one side. So let me show you the sets that we will be using for this. So the first one is uh, this flower in the watercolor flower set three. We are going to be using this mini cottage from the mini cottages set. Um, we're going to be using this flower from the watercolor flower set two set, both of the grasses in the foliage set one, and then also the mini critter set, um, the cat. So let's get started. I have, once again, my little watercolor paper with my post-it paper around. And I love this because a lot of you that have been watching me the last couple of weeks, um, you know that I love that really nice line that we get from using post-it paper. If you're interested in post-it paper, it is on our website and we will link um, that below. So this one is going to be a smaller watercolor and it is about two and a half by three and it's just kind of a mini picture. So you can make this bigger uh, and just spread it out and I'll show you an example at the end. But for this one, I wanted to keep it nice and small. So we're going to get our trusty ruler again and we are going to draw a line right across the center just like we've done before. Now we already know our focal point is going to be right here at the corner of that line that we just drew. So get your line in and then we're going to take our ruler and we're just going to draw another line. Now we don't want to draw corner to co corner. We want to come up just a little bit. This doesn't need to be perfect, but you're just going to get a line in here. And then we are also going to draw another line about here. Remember, draw your lines really lightly so that you can erase it at the end and you won't have any residual um, lead marks or pencil marks. So now we're gonna take our stamp and I'm going to use the uh, Little Country Mini Cottage first. And I'm gonna stamp this using the 45 sepia brown. Now you might get a little bit of green out of this, that's okay. I'm just going to ink this up and I am going to use my stamp positioner because I really want to make sure that I get this nice and straight. So I'm going to use my stamp positioner and don't mind the other images that are on here. <laughs> I use this guy a lot. So I'm just going to line this up in the corner and stamp that down on my square. And this way I can make sure that I get my house exactly where I want it. So I think I'm happy about there. I'm going to use my positioner, get that L shape back in, take away the square, re-ink my stamp. And I'm not too concerned about this inking being perfect. So I'm going to hold my positioner down and stamp my cottage in. Okay, and don't worry about it if you're missing some lines in here. Like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect and I'm gonna be putting grass and all that good stuff in here. So I would never throw this away because I'm missing a line. And we can always go back in at the end if we want that line and put it back in. So that's no big deal. Okay, so now we're gonna take our paintbrush and a little bit of water and we are going to start pulling the shadows out of our cottage. So ignore the pencil lines, act like those aren't even there. And you're gonna start pulling the shadow out from underneath those eaves because that's gonna be nice and dark under there. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And this whole side is going to be shadowed in. So I'm gonna add color all the way down and make that nice and dark in here. 
We've made it really easy for you to kind of know which side is shaded in because when it's turned a little bit, always the turned side is gonna get the shadow. Unless you're doing like several different cottages or different houses and some of them are turned, um, you may need to shade differently, but for individuals, like this, anytime there is an open side, that open side is always gonna get a nice dark shadow. All right, so now I'm gonna take my palette and I'm going to add some sepia, number 45, to my palette. And I'm gonna add this to the rooftop of my cottage. And you can see it's pretty monochromatic now because we're just kind of pulling in the shadows. We will add some color when we go to add the door and the windows and that'll really break up the sepia. And I've got a little shadow there. And maybe a little bit on the door. Okay. Once again I'm going to come back in and really make sure this whole side is nice and dark and I'm just ignoring that pencil line. That's all gonna be erased. I'm coming in and just darkening that up. So that's nice and dark. And now I'm gonna take, actually we're gonna keep that palette there. And I'm gonna take my number 15 olive green and my number 86 African violet. And I'm just gonna put these two colors on right now so that we can start adding in our windows and the background. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this 86 and I'm gonna start putting in just these little window panes into the cottage. And these, once again, do not need to be perfect. But I do use a really fine tip or the fine tip of my brush. Now you could go in and use the number one connoisseur watercolor brush. This That would make this so much easier because you get a really nice tiny tip. So there's a little tip for you, no pun intended. Use that little brush to get these really fine details a lot easier. Okay. Just adding in a little bit more darkness into those windows. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that 15 olive green and I'm going to start putting in our horizon line, which is going to be right back here. So I'm going to actually kind of angle this down. Remember, everything comes back to our focal point, everything. So I'm gonna angle everything down to move towards that focal point. So I'm gonna start pretty high back here, and these are just gonna be rolling hills in the background. And I can make these as high or low as I want to, and every one of these is going to look a little bit different when you do yours. So don't feel like, oh, mine doesn't look exactly like hers. I gotta start over. Don't do that because all of ours are going to be different. And if you've ever taken any of our classes, you will know that because everybody that you're sitting next to has a different project image than you do, or they come up with something different, or they, you know, maybe they use a little bit more water than you do, or a little bit less water than you do. Maybe they use bolder colors. So it's really, um, it's actually really fun to see what everybody comes up with just using the same products. So I'm gonna make this a little bit darker down in here because that's kind of shadowed in a little bit. That's a nice big tall hill in the background. <laughs> okay, so that's gonna look a little bit different every time you do it. Since I've got my brush, now that these panes are dry, I can come in here confidently and just pull a little bit of this brown out. If I would have gone in there with the panes wet, I could have pulled out a lot of that blue and then had to kind of come back in with a little towel or something to kind of seep up a little bit of that blue or even just come in and put blue in the house. That can work too. So I wanna take my detailed tip of the sepia and really put in a nice dark shadow in here. That detail tip is so nice. Love that. 
because it allows you to come back in and just add more contrast. So I'm coming in just right underneath those eaves, a little bit under the window, a little in the door. Be mindful that you may still be wet on these areas, and if you are, that color will really seep out. Okay, so now we are going to take our um, our 45 sepia and our 86 African violet, that dark blue, and we're gonna mix just a little bit of this together. And I'm gonna get a little bit more of that sepia, a little bit less blue. And I'm going to use that for my road, which makes a really nice gray. You can see that, it's kind of a bluey, browny gray. And I love mixing these two for this because you get a really nice um, multi-dimensional gray. A lot of grays out there are um, really flat and it's just nice to have a gray that's kind of rich. So you can make this more brown or more blue, just depending on your preference. And maybe you mix a little more blue one time, maybe you mix a little bit more brown. So we'll give you some um, dimension in your grays. So to be in that flat, really flat gray. I'm just gonna kind of wash this out a little bit. I don't want it super dark because I'm gonna come in here and add a lot of my grass and stuff in here. Um, so I, I definitely want this a little bit lighter. And, and as things sort of go back in um, into the background, they're going to get darker naturally. So this being lighter is going to lead your eye into the background because it gets darker. So I can actually take just a little bit more of that and darken up as it goes back like that. Okay, so let's take our number 72 and you can see I'm sort of just coming back and forth as things dry. So I'm waiting for my road to dry. I'm gonna go in and add some color to my door. If I'm waiting for something in my house to dry, then I'll come in, put in my little cat and my grass and all that good stuff while the cottage is drying. So just sort of uh, jump back and forth. You can always wait, that's totally fine. But if you jump back and forth, your um, what you just did is dry before you know it. So right now I'm mixing 86 and 72. So this is the 72 pine green, 86 African violet. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this into that door, make it a nice blue, kind of a turquoisey, darker turquoisey blue. And I'm gonna let that dry before I come in and add my doorknob or anything um, into that door. So I'm gonna let that dry. And meanwhile, I'm going to take my little kitty and I'm going to use my, uh, my little positioner again. And I really want to make sure that I get him or her positioned right where I want her. So go ahead and grab your sepia and we're going to ink the cat all the way. And then we're going to take and stamp that into our stamp positioner. And we can kind of position her wherever we want. So if you want her more onto the side, you can decide that. And I kind of want her sort of somewhere in here. Take my positioner, take my square away, and re-ink my stamp. And I will just stamp that in. Perfect, every single time. It's so nice, I love that positioner. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm going to just slowly start pulling out a little bit of the shadows here in our kitty. And shadows are always gonna be where they curl up or on the bottom. The highlights are gonna to be toward the top of the head or the top of the back. So I'm going to just bring this in and just very lightly, very light handed here. Okay. And I'm going to use that as a guide when I go to put in some of my number six brown. I'm just going to add a little bit of the brown to my palette. And I'm gonna use that sepia as my guide 
to where to put this brown. And it always comes out a little bit peachy when you first put it on. And actually this color kind of makes our kitty look like a fox. Could probably make him a little fox. Although there is a fox in that set, so cute. But a lot of people have orange cats, right? <laughs> so we'll go with this. And I'm going to leave the top of his head nice and light. So I'm not gonna color that in at all. And I'm just gonna leave that nice and light. And notice I still left my highlight there. I'm still bringing this down even though it's light. I'm gonna grab some more and go back over and hit those areas again, but not go, not go quite as far. So um, what I mean by quite as far is when I brought the color up, I came up here, but when I bring in my second layer, I don't wanna go this high. I wanna keep it lower because what that does is create a, a graduated um, a, a gradient pretty much. So you're going light, middle, dark, so that you get a nice contrast in your image. So when you're layering like that, you want to keep that uh, differentiation between the layers so that you get a nice contrast there. And then I'll take my detail tip and put even a little bit more of the shadow in into the areas that I know are gonna be nice and dark. And maybe I'll put some little little stripes into this little guy. And I'm gonna come back in with my detail tip, or my brush, and just soften this up too. And those stripes obviously do not need to be perfect like everything else. <laughs> just keep it really loose. And when you have that mindset that things don't have to be perfect, it sort of frees you up to be artistic you can sort of um, do things as you feel led to do artistically. I'm gonna take my detail tip of the sepia and I'm gonna fill in her little ears, her eyes, and her nose. Always fill those in because when you don't fill those in, the animal's face is flat. So no matter what animal you're doing, always, always fill in the eyes and the nose and the ears. So I'm gonna take my detail tip of that same sepia and just go ahead and put in my door knob. And I lost my line a little bit here. I'm just gonna bring that in a, just a little bit. I don't need a lot there. Now I'm gonna take my grass. So I'm gonna take the jumbo grass, move away my palette, jumbo grass. And I'm going to use number 15 olive green love this green and I'm going to come in and just start stamping this grass right around my little kitty and don't worry about stamping right over her because grass grows over the top too right it's kind of surrounding her so this doesn't need to be perfect just get your grass in and I say that a lot because I know you guys and I've taught you guys and um, one of the things I always hear is I just, I want it to be just perfect, but nature isn't perfect, right? Nature is imperfectly perfect. And when you have imperfectly perfect nature, you should have that in your mind as a mindset when you're doing these watercolors because we're mimicking nature, right? So if nature is perfectly imperfect, then our watercolors can be perfectly imperfect. They don't have to be just so. And I totally get it because I'm sort of a recovering perfectionist myself. And I totally understand <laughs> wanting it to be a certain way. But nature is not that way. So let it go. Okay. Stamping the larger grass in the foreground, smaller grass in the background. And grass comes over the road too. I still have to tell myself that sometimes. I'm gonna take my brush and I am going to start pulling this grass out of its lines. Just like this. 
feathering up and out, just using single strokes. You can go back and forth like this if you want a thicker grass. But I want a nice, thin grass, a really dainty grass. And I'm gonna pull the grass out by our kitty. And she just looks so cozy. Take this grass up here, same thing. And right here, go right over the road. And when you go over the road, it settles the road down. So it grounds it. And it says, okay, there's like stuff planted, but it's growing over the top. So you know that road is grounded down as far as it can go. If you don't put your grass over the top, it actually makes your road look like it's kind of floating. So make sure you have that uh, grass sort of coming over, at least in, in some areas. And I wanna bring that color all the way to my edge, like so. And now I wanna put in my sky. I'm gonna take my number 17 steel blue I love for the sky. 17 steel blue, a little bit of water, get that nice and wet, and then I'm just going to dump that in and just sort of push it around. Dump it in and push it around. And definitely take excess water and just blend out the edges of that. I'm mostly just dabbing with this. So I'm not doing a straight back and forth motion. I'm just dabbing and pulling in some clouds. This gives your sky more differentiation instead of being flat. It adds texture and balance. And I'm gonna bring in the clouds above like this so that I get a nice strong line for my post-it tape or where my post-it tape was. And I'll take a little bit more water and just soften those harsher lines. Love these clouds, they're so pretty. Love adding clouds. Okay, I want to add just a little bit of greenery just back in here. So I'm gonna grab just a touch of that 15 olive green just add a teeny bit back here because we know it's going to be green, but it's not going to be really detailed. Just a touch. And I want to darken that horizon line just a little bit more before we erase our lines so that we get a nice solid horizon line here. And we can add Little bit, little bit of our stipple dots if we want. I'm just using the 15 for this. And really, I'm waiting for all of this to dry so I can put my flowers in. I'll just put in some dots while I'm waiting for that to dry. And I'll take a little bit of tape. I just used a little piece like this. And I'm gonna put that right over my kitty to protect her from my flowers I'm gonna put in. So I'm gonna start with this one from the flower set two. And I'm gonna use number 86 for the blooms, which is the African violet, that dark blue. And number 72 for the stems. And I'm just using three of them. So I didn't ink this one all the way to the edge. And we'll put that in. And then we'll ink our flowers from flower set three using number eight violet for the blooms and 15 olive green for the stems. And I'll just ink these. We'll just put a few of these in. Yeah, I'll put some here. And then when we take this off, our flowers will be behind our kitty. Take our brush and just add a little bit of water to these blooms. See that purple coming out and the dark blue, really nice. 
And I do want to just connect these a little bit. So although I normally don't touch the stems with water, I do want to kind of give the illusion that these flowers are nice and cozy behind our kitty. Okay, now I can take my eraser and just begin to erase the lines out, including the line in the background or the little dot or focal point. Ooh, I got a little bit of green in my clouds, no big deal. I'm gonna see if I can wash that out a little bit. No doubt some of you have done that, so this might be a good lesson for you. I'm gonna take my brush, just a little bit of water, and water on your brush can sort of act as an eraser, which is really nice. Take a little bit more of the blue and just drop it in. And it's pretty much gone now, which is really nice. Now I will take off my tape. You can see I've got a nice line here. Take that tape off. This is such a fun technique. You guys, if you have not tried the tape, you've got to try it. It's so fun and you get this really nice sort of framed image. And I was gonna show you another example of using this perspective work uh, by doing it with another little house. So you can leave the kitty off and add another little house or put a kitty up here still. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give you that idea, making it a little bit bigger and sort of still using that perspective to the side, uh, but adding another little cottage in there. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up and we will see you next week. Thanks, bye. Oh,